my channel, Berries and Spice, a channel for those with a refined palate. My aim here is to show you the process of creating, cooking and plating up dishes with a fine dining twist in your home kitchen. On top of recipes, cooking tips and plating tricks, you will find resources and stories to help you become a better and more confident home chef. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a really versatile curry sauce that will go with a variety of vegetables and meats. This is part one of a two-part series, so stay tuned and subscribe to my channel. Uh, this week I'm making the curry sauce and next week I'll be using it with lamb scotch eggs. So, let's get cooking! Here's what you'll need. 30 grams of butter, 3 tablespoons of vegetable oil, about 500 grams of onions, 5 garlic cloves, 30 to 40 grams of ginger, one small handful of dried fenugreek leaves, curry spice mix, the exact ingredients and steps are in the description, one can of tomatoes, or use fresh tomatoes if in season, one can of coconut milk, 150 ml of veggie stock, or chicken stock, two tablespoons of tomato paste, two teaspoons of turmeric, one teaspoon of sweet paprika, a handful of fresh coriander, and do reserve some for plating, and salt. Peel the ginger. The easiest way is using a spoon to scrape off the skin. Then grate it. Peel and chop the garlic. Melt the butter in a large pan and mix it with the vegetable oil. Add the garlic and ginger and fry on low heat, making sure nothing burns. Chop the onions finely, then add them to the pan. Season with salt. Cover and cook on low heat until very soft. Just a short break to talk about onions. So one of the secrets to making a great curry is cooking the onions really, really well until they're really soft and they break apart and until they're really nicely caramelized. I know that takes a while, but especially if you're planning on blending that curry sauce, that is what will help you get like a super silky and smooth result. Add three teaspoons of the curry spice mix together with the fenugreek leaves and stir. Add the canned tomatoes, coconut milk, vegetable or chicken stock, and tomato paste. Taste and adjust the seasoning. Add more of the spice mix if you wish, plus some extra turmeric and paprika for a nicer color. I've already told you that this recipe is truly versatile. For example, if you'd rather have a vegetarian curry, I'd probably just add the vegetables to what you have at this point without blending it. Or, if you want to use lentils, Add a bit more stock, cook the lentils, and you're gonna end up with a lovely dal. But let's get back to my usual recipe. Blend the sauce until silky smooth with the coriander leaves. You can also add the coriander leaves in the last few minutes of it cooking. I forgot to do it, so I did it at this stage. Make sure the sauce isn't very hot, or else, because of the heat, the top of the blender will come off and the curry sauce will splash all over your kitchen. curries some seven years ago and they're really what got me into cooking. One of my first cookbooks was actually a curry cookbook. I've worked on this recipe for over five years and I've changed it and improved it over the years and I've gotten to a result that I'm very happy about. So I really hope you'll enjoy it too. But first, let's talk about a few things that make a curry great. Let's address the two elephants in the room. Curry powders and freshly grinding your uh, spices, mortar and pestle versus on automatic coffee grinder, for example. To make a curry truly great, avoid using store-bought curry powders. First of all, they're a bit inauthentic and most of the time they won't contain all the ingredients that will make a curry absolutely amazing. They won't contain stuff like cinnamon and cloves and star anise and coriander seeds and cumin seeds, all the amazing ingredients that just make curries burst with flavor. If you do really want to be quicker and absolutely resist the idea of making your own spice blend, I recommend you getting some good garam masala from an Indian store and then mixing it with stuff like turmeric, paprika and a bit of chili powder. 
My spice blend uses very specific ingredients and some of them are dry roasted, which leads to a slightly smokier aroma. You'll find all the steps on how to make it in the description. And that leads me to the second elephant in the room, freshly ground spices. And what should you use, a mortar and pestle or an automatic coffee grinder? Using a mortar and pestle is always the best thing because that actually leads to the highest amount of aromas that are released because the mortar just breaks every single aroma molecule. But I do realize that sometimes it's quicker to just use a coffee grinder. You won't get the same aroma intensity, so you may have to adjust the um, uh, spices to your curry as you cook it, which is why I always recommend actually adding one teaspoon at a time and then adjusting the flavor based on your personal preferences. And also it depends on how fresh the spices were, when you ground the spices, how you ground the spices. So just, you know, taste. So I've already told you how to make this curry vegetarian, but I've also had it with a variety of meats and guess what, even seafood works. So let me tell you how you can do that. If you're planning on using meat, like chicken or pork or any other kind of meat, I recommend you marinate it with the following, bit of yogurt, bit of vegetable oil, a teaspoon of the spice mix, some grated ginger and some uh, grated garlic. And just marinate that overnight, ideally, or at least for a couple of hours. Then you can cook it on the stove, you can cook it um, in, uh, in the oven, or you can char grill it. I've made this curry a couple of times with pork tenderloin that I uh, char grilled and that turned out really nice. And uh, when I had a collaboration dinner with Igor from Noble Savage, we actually served the curry inside a tart with delicious uh, pan-seared sweetbreads. My plan now is to serve this with uh, lamb scotch egg, so stay tuned for that full recipe, which will come out next Monday. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to get notified when uh, the new recipe is up. But I've also made this dish a couple of times with fish and seafood, and that turned out really nicely. The only secret to it is adding a little bit of lime juice to the sauce to make it a little bit more acidic to fit uh, the fish and seafood. And if I must admit, I've even had this as a soup by just adding a bit more stock to it when I cooked it. My other secret here is to make large batches because it does take a while to cook. And this recipe makes about four to five portions, which is very nice because I can just freeze them and use all of that on lazy days. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, video. And if you did, don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel to get notified when uh, new videos are out. And for more gourmet stories, also follow me on Instagram, berries and spice. If you've got any questions or would just like to say hi, leave a comment or DM me on Instagram. Until next time, bye!